Got a massive washout here, and we're gonna take the time to do a little bit of a hike and hike up to the top, or at least close to the top, see if we can see anything. You have deposits on this side over here, and you also have a small one on that side over there, a couple kilometers away. So this is like uh, 40 to 60 feet wide where it's washed out the mountain. So if there's any bedrock exposed, we can get a good look at that. Complete dryness in the creek, and let's go see what we can find. A couple minutes up the creek, maybe 50, 100 meters, find some prioritization here. Pretty coarse looking. So that's interesting. So the rocks I'm seeing, porphyry, you have granitic rocks here, you have basalt there, looks like you got some uh, odd colored shirt. We're about uh, 200 meters up the creek now. We found a couple other small pieces with uh, disseminated Iron pyrite. This is an interesting piece right here. Look at the nodules right there. It looks like epidote, but nothing in the bedrock so far. There's a little bit of oxidization on bedrock there, but we will see. Becoming increasingly interesting. You have some sulfides there, up there. You got lots of samples like this. You hammer it open and you got lots of disseminated iron pyrite. Really good sign that this cuts through something. Loads of this stuff everywhere. So I guess there is a little bit of water here. You can see that right there, there's another small little sulfide vein. But right here, you got a vein right here. You got disseminated iron pyrite in this vein here. I'd say about 30% uh, of the vein is mineralized. And this goes up here. Another couple samples from in there. Iron pyrite. Iron pyrite. More iron pyrite. That is from right in here. So it looks like this actual area here is not quite a vein. It's just a uh, mineralized section of your host rock. That other little vein right here is actually a solid sulfide vein. Beside it right here, your host rock has disseminated iron pyrite. And up here, sort of looks like it's clay mixed with sulfides. Probably stuff that's washed down in the fracture here. Okay, so right in here you have another sulfide vein running all the way down here. You can see sulfides exposed right there, all along in here, and he found some sulfides right on there. So here's more sulfide veining. Another piece here, broken in half. Some loose brittle sulfides in a nice little pod there. So another vein here. Now the veins aren't pure sulfides. They're basically areas of the, the rock. You can see fractures in it and they, 
on either side and the, the actual rock is mineralized, but it's different than your outside host rock. So we're finding some decent pyrite samples though. We'll definitely have to get those XRF'd. This one's about 10 centimeters wide, this vein. So we do have a larger area here that's oxidized as well with, again, your pyrotization up in there as well, all over here. Pyrites disseminated, nothing crazy. I'd say about 5% uh, of the rock has pyrite, some spots a little bit more. This spot looks interesting. This looks like a quartz vein sheared off here. So I've hammered away at this for a little bit and all the way from here over to here, it looks like some sort of intrusive and it's mineralized, but it's very weakly mineralized. And most likely when this washout happened, it knocked this whole wall out because this creek used to be a lot higher and there was a lot more rock in here. Right beside this intrusive looking body right here, we found something pretty interesting down here and it runs all the way up in there. There's definitely been some hydrothermal action in here and take a look what we found. We got some copper staining all in here, some malachite, it's pretty interesting. More malachite there, and you got your veining going up here, so that's pretty interesting as well. So we got that little bit of a showing down there. You can see a little bit of copper staining along in here. This is definitely a quartz carbonate right here and that's what your mineralization is following. You can see little specks all over the place here. So that's definitely copper sulfides. So it'd be interesting to see if there's a bigger section of this along the creek because that is pretty cool. Definitely shows a presence of copper bearing minerals. So we got a couple okay samples. Really hard to get a nice intact one because this quartz carb is so brittle. Here's one you have against the host rock though. You can see obvious calcopyrite and bornite. It's probably the best sample we're actually gonna be able to get that's intact. We'll try and hammer a little bit more. More veining running through here, all the way down here. Your vein gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And right here, we're at about 20 centimeters. Right there, it's at about 30 centimeters before it goes under the overburden. We're looking at about, I'd say, 25% pyrotization in the vein, maybe about 30, 40 at the most in certain areas. So it's interesting how it gets quite a bit bigger as it goes. 20 meters farther, take a look at this. All this black stuff here in this vein. There is some serious action going on in this creek. I think we're actually on a fault. So, if you take a look at this, look at the mineralization, this is a quartz vein you have some kind of black mineral in here and this is all pyrite in here and all along in here so I'll take a sample from here as well more exposed right there so we've hammered a bunch of samples off we got our sample for our analysis here's just a couple pieces right here of your quartz vein the black may be impurities in the quartz, but I'm not sure. A 
looks really interesting. We got about 50% uh, of the vein mineralized. We got more up here. We'll hammer a bunch of that off too. All that pyrite in there, just chipped a sample out. Some nice pyrotization there. The black may just be part of the rock. Hard to tell. It's pretty dark in the canyon. Quartz vein with black and pyrite actually continues on up here. You can see all in here. You have the veining. So you got about a 20 centimeter wide vein exposed over about 15 meters. Gets really oxidized beside it and you have pyrotization. So that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna pull one last sample from here, I think. We're just at a fork in the road. We got a waterfall to the right and we got another creek to the left, which is probably the main creek. This looks like a overflow washout. And that probably was part of the problem when the creek washed out. We're gonna go up those, but at a later date, it's about 7.30, almost eight o'clock, and we got a little bit of a hike down and a hour and a bit drive home. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care.